Hello, my name's John Price, and this is a short video on how to be a good responder when playing bridge. I've got two pieces of advice I want to give to you. The first is that you need to allow your partner to describe their hand, and they're going to do it in just two beats. So when you're responding, try not to get in the way of their job of describing their hand. The second advice is this. When you've heard these two bids, you've got a pretty good idea of what your partner's hand is like. You know your own hand. So it's up to you to make the decision on the final contract. Now that may seem rather harsh and hard. You might be sitting there with only a six-point hand, and you know from your partner's bids that they've got a big hand of maybe 15 to 17 points. Why is it you making the decision? The reason is you're the one with all the information. Your partner hardly knows anything about your hand, but you know a whole lot about theirs. So you need to make the decision. Oh, and a final thing. This is quite critical. Remember that when you bid a new suit in response to your partner's first bid, then your partner must bid again. Okay, let's have a look at some example hands. Here's the first one. A fairly ordinary sort of hand. You've got seven high card points and one for length. It's an eight point hand, it's certainly not an opener, but you could certainly respond with this. Let's have a look at some possible uh, scenarios. What if your partner opened one club? What would you do? Well, that's easy enough. The only a suit suitable for bidding here, surely, is diamonds. So you'd bid one diamond. What if they opened one diamond? Ah, okay, well, this is great. They've opened diamonds and you've got five to the ace king. Okay, the decisions have been made. We've got a, a diamond contract. Let's decide how many we're going to go. No, hold on. You want to give your partner the opportunity to, to describe their hand. And they've only had one bid. Let's keep it low. Let's keep things open until we know more about their hand. So what do we bid? Do we bid, say, two diamonds? No. A response of one of a, a partner's suit and then two says you've got a weak hand of six to nine points. We don't want to give that impression at all. We want to keep things open. Now, in fact, I'm looking at this hand here. You have got another suit that you can bid. I know you're going to think this is strange, but you can bid one spade. You're saying that you've got six points or more. You certainly do. And you're saying you've got four spades or more. And you do have that. You're not telling a lie at all. And you're keeping things low to see what your partner's next bid is. Then you can make the decision. Now you might find that hard. You want It's clear to you that diamonds is great. But wouldn't it be fantastic if your partner's got spades as well? Then you're in a major suit and you've got a second side suit of diamonds where you can reap loads of, of uh, tricks. So keep it low. What if your partner bid one heart as an opening bid? Well, we want to bid diamonds. But we can't bid two diamonds. Our hand is not strong enough to go to the two level. You need 10 points or more, and we've only got eight. Well, what could we bid? Ah, isn't there what's called a, a, a rubbish bid, where you go one no trump, and you're saying, uh, partner, I haven't got anything else to bid, but I've still got more than six points. Yes, we could do that, but you don't want to do that, because you do have a suit to bid. You can bid one spade again. 
Why not go one no Trump? Well, it's because you don't have to. You'll only respond with one no Trump when you have to do that. There's no other option. If you do one no Trump, that might be getting in the way of your partner's next bid. They might have opened one heart and were then really keen to bid one no Trump to describe their hand. Don't get in the way of that. One spade is a perfectly good bid. Don't worry that your partner's going to pass and you'll be uh, in, in a suit contract where the best card you've got is a ten of spades. They have to bid again. What if your partner opened one spade? Now, this is good news. Let's re-evaluate re your hand. You've now got a fit with your partner in a major suit, spades. And you've got a singleton three of clubs. And you didn't take that into account when first evaluating your hand. Now you've got seven high card points, one for length, and three more, at least, for that three of clubs. You've got 11 point hand. Spades is a great contract. Why not now go three spades? And then your partner could have the possibility of going four spades. Let's go back to the uh, bid where, we, where your partner opened one club. And we'll go further with that one. So I suggested, and I hope you agreed, that you'd go one diamond in response to that. That's your longest suit. And now your partner's gone one heart. What are we going to do? And the answer is... You need to make a decision right now. What do we know about our partner's hand? They've got four hearts, at least, and they've got five clubs, at least, but they've got 12 to 14 points only. How do I know that? Well, when they opened one club, they had a barrier of two clubs. And if they bid above that barrier with a new suit, then they'd have a 15 point hand or more. And they haven't done that. They've chosen not to do that. And so they've got a 12 to 14 point hand. And we've only got an 18 point hand. There's nothing exciting going to happen here at all. We're certainly not going to get a game. And well, what suit shall we choose? Oh gosh. Well, diamonds was great for you, but your partner's got five clubs and he's got Four, four hearts, and we need to make a choice. We need to make a decision. So I think, although they've got five clubs at least, we've only got one. That's six. Whereas with hearts, we know that they've got four at least, and we do have three to the 10-9. So I think one heart is our best contract. And we can't do anything else. No point in moving it up to two hearts. That would make it even more difficult. So, I think you're going to pass. What if their second bid was one no trump? Oh, now the information's different. Now they've got at least four clubs, but they've also got a no trump hand, but it's better than an opening one no trump. They've got 15 to 17 points. Okay, well, 15 to 17. Well, even with the very best of 17 points, and we've got, we've got at, at eight, well, I suppose we could just luckily scrape together 25 points, but it's more likely to be a lot less than that. So I don't think game in no trumps is on. Is there any point in going to two no trumps or introducing another suit? No, there isn't. So I think a one no trump contract is fine and let your partner play it. How about this one? One club, one diamond, and then the response was one spade. Well, just like before, now we're happy. They've got spades at least four and we've got four. We re-evaluate our hand, and we've got an 11-point hand now. Now, 
I know they've only got a, a 12 to 14 point hand, but they don't know that, that we've got a match, a fit in spades. Just like we've reevaluated our hand here. When, when your partner knows that they've got a fit, they may be able to reevaluate their hand. So I think what we do is we invite partner with a bit of three spades. We're making the decision. That's our job. And it's going to be spades. But we're saying, partner, we're pretty close to a game. Reevaluate your hand. If you've got something a little bit extra, there may be a, a singleton there or possibly a doubleton. Then go on to four spades. So you are making the decision, but you're giving them the opportunity to make that final choice. Here's a different hand. Oh gosh, a different hand indeed. We've got 9, 10, 14 high card points and one for the extra club. This is a 15 point hand. This is an opening hand. Hey, this is great news. But, oh, but your partner has opened one club. Whoa, your partner's got 12 points at least and four clubs at least. And we have got a 15-point hand. Do, do we get overexcited now about uh, 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 clubs? We surely got gaming clubs. Shall I go up to five clubs? No, it's too early yet. Don't rush things. Allow your partner to bid again. Now, how are we going to do that? If I go in clubs, the decision is made. We're just going to discover how many clubs we're going to go to. But we have another suit that we can bid. Hearts. But oh dear. All right, I'll bid hearts. But how can I tell my partner that I've got such a good hand? The answer is, you don't need to tell your partner anything. All you need to do is to keep the bidding open and allowing your partner to make their precious second bid. Then you make your decision, then you become decisive. So a simple one heart, just one, you don't have to jump to two, just one heart will give your partner room for their second bid and then we can make a decision. How about if your partner opened one diamond? Now, your natural feeling would be you bid your longest suit and that would be two clubs. And you can do that because you've got 10 points or more. But you've got in mind that you want your partner to be able to make their second bid. And you don't want to get in the way of that. And there's another factor that those hearts are lovely and they're in a major suit. So I think the answer here is for you to go one heart and then just see what your partner does. You bid a new suit, they have to bid again. What if they opened one heart? Oh my gosh, now things are exciting. You've found your match already in a major suit and you have got a lovely hand there. So what do we do? Do we get really excited about um, bidding in hearts? There's no need to yet. There's no rush. If you go two clubs, you're not telling any lie at all, you've got clubs as a suit, and you've got 10 points or more, but you're giving room for your partner to make their second bid, and then you can make a big decision here. If they opened one spade, we want to keep things as low as possible. It's a two club response. You are telling the truth about your hand, but you're not giving much information. You don't need to. You're the one that's going to make the decision about the final contract. And you'll see what they'll do after this. Let's go back to this scenario. Your partner opened one club, and I've suggested you go one heart. And they respond, one spade. So what's the decision you're going to make now? Remember. You've got a big hand, you've got 15 points, and your partner's got 12 to 14 points, five clubs, at least, and four spades, at least. 
Okay, well, your partner's got clubs and spades covered. You've got hearts and diamonds covered. And you've got at least 27 points. And you're the one making the decision? What's it going to be? You're right. Three no trumps. It's so, in summary, what have we learned? Well, what you need to do is to allow your partner to describe their hand. And hopefully they're going to do it as in, uh, with as much accuracy as possible. And in only two bids. So what you must do is, when you make your response to their first bid, is to not get in the way of them doing this description. And very important is trust yourself to make the decision on the final contract. You're the one with all the information. I hope that's been useful.